Oh, sound core, sound core, sound core. What has happened? Now listen, guys, I know by the name of this video and probably 10 seconds in, I know there's gonna be a lot of pushback on this video. I know there's gonna cause a lot of stir up. A lot of people are not gonna like what I'm gonna say, but that's okay. This is not a factual video. This is just my opinion. This is just what I think, and you are entitled to feel the way you wanna feel, especially if you are a Soundcore fan. And I also wanna disclaim this video by also saying that yes, I am indeed a Soundcore fan. If you wanna check my YouTube channel, if you wanna check everything, you can see that the foundation of what my channel started was with Soundcore back in 2019 when I was 19 years old, just getting into the wireless audio reviews, just getting into this. And I just wanna put that out there before I start this video. But I have noticed for the last couple of years that Soundcore has been, I don't wanna say on a decline, but hasn't really felt the same anymore. I feel there are five reasons as to why this is. And I wanna discuss all five of them. I've written them down here and I'll put some evidence on the page just for your own, just to kind of back my claims. But before we talk about the issues, let's kind of flash back a little bit in history. In 2019, Soundcore bursted onto the scene. They had released some headphones prior, but they were officially on the map when the AirPods Pro dropped and they released the Liberty Air 2 and the Liberty 2 Pro and the Liberty 2. All these headphones were available and they really skyrocketed the popularity of Soundcore. Given that this was Anchor's audio subsidiary brand, it was also backed by a huge company with reliability. And in 2020, during the pandemic, they also did peak as well because they made cheap, affordable products that everybody can afford to use because the pandemic shut everybody down. There was not a lot of money to be spent, but over time, they were able to build a huge following. I was one of those people as well. I made videos during the pandemic and I really did a lot and they're still around. You can see all the speakers that I have. And the peak of the company, in my opinion, was when they released the Liberty 3 Pro. At that point, that was the peak of Soundcore where they were really, in my opinion, at the top of their game. They were releasing a premium product. They were releasing quality. It was amazing. And then they followed it up with the Liberty Air 2 Pros, and then they did so on and so forth. But by the time the Liberty 4 came out, I noticed that a lot of hype around the company started to die. And then they rebranded, they got the new redesigned logo, and then they just started releasing products left, right, and center with no time frame. And then the next thing you know, they're releasing so much and very few YouTubers are still talking about them. I mean, they're still around, but they're not being talked about as the game changers they once were. And I'm gonna give you my evidence as to why this is the factor. The first evidence is really what I just said. There is no more wow factor. Three years ago, Soundcore really, I would say they really not only gave a huge wow factor for the general consumer in the tech that they were buying, but they were also really in competition with some big brands like Sony, Bose, JBL. They were really, really there with the sound quality. The ACAA design was a huge thing for them. The marketing campaign behind the drivers that they were using, the battery technology, all of it was so well executed. But then you flash forward to now and everything just kind of just took a backseat. The sound quality took a backseat in favor of features, which is not a terrible thing. But the whole idea of the company was to get the at least the best sound for a budget. But that leads in to the next thing. The competition got better. You know, companies now are coming out with so many wireless earbuds that it was so different three, four years ago. The AirPods Pro and the AirPods were and still are some of the most popular earbuds on the market, but Soundcore was able to make a noise maker and was able to stand toe to toe with those kinds of numbers. They were selling very well. They were doing very, very good. And Soundcore to this day is still doing well, but they don't have that hype that they once had in comparison. 
And that's because the competition is starting to catch up to them. One more status audio, JBL getting their new earbud lineups coming out, the AirPods continuing their dominance. And then somewhere along the way, Soundcore just kind of decided, eh, we don't really got to do that anymore. We got so many earbuds, so what should we care? But that was the reason they stood out, was the fact that they were giving you something that can go toe to toe with brands like that, that it really felt so refreshing. And it was just a shame that we kind of saw that because with every earbud release, whether it was a premium budget or low range earbud or headphone, there was always some kind of cutback and there was never really a full release, not until recently, but most of their earbuds started to feel incomplete. And they were like, oh, well you just have to get that model if you want this, this and this. And it just, it, it felt so dragged out with so many other earbuds. And the, that, that leads into the next thing is when you start doing things like this, the fans are noticed, are going to at least notice this. And while the fan base has been very strong, Soundcore themselves have been disconnected from their fans. Now that's not to say that they don't care about their fans. I'm not here to say that. But they used to post, if you guys are really old school Soundcore like me, you will know that they had a very, very, big interaction with their fans, no matter how big or how small it was. They had the community forum, which used to be at the peak, where all the fans would come together, where everybody would work together to help each other. And this was a fan base that so many like audio companies would have wished for. They had loyal fans, they had dedicated users to this forum. And to this day, there are still people on there that are still waiting, but Soundcore just for some reason decided to abandon the community forum. They stopped updating it. They stopped interacting with their fans. They stopped, they really just kind of took a backseat and, and just said, you know, we're not going to do it anymore. And I don't want to really kind of cross any NDAs here, but a while back, I was part of a beta testers for Soundcore. I beta tested their headphones, gave them feedback. I've had to sit down with them and actually give feedback for future releases here. And I had so much fun doing it because not only did they actually hear the feedback, but they used it to improve their models. Now, I don't even know what they're doing anymore. I'm not saying I'm in the loop anymore. I mean, I'm here and there, but I don't do it anymore because Soundcore just seems like they don't really value the feedback anymore. Now they're just focusing on whatever they feel is necessary. And listen, they're right to do so, but it felt nice interacting with their collaborative team. It felt nice interacting with the people behind the scenes to give ideas and feedback to grow their product. Products. That leads into the next thing. When the brand redesigned, that was the start of where we saw Soundcore was going. Listen, I'm not here to say that the redesign was bad. The, the, the redesign of Soundcore, the brand itself was good. But the whole idea of the original concept of Soundcore was audio first. Now it just feels like variety over quality. And that's the problem. The brand has so many earbuds, it's hard to really distinguish what you're getting from one earbud to the other. Now, I'm not against the idea of having multiple earbuds for different users and different markets, but there are so many that it feels so oversaturated that it is hard as a reviewer for myself to get all of these earbuds and then try to find differences. I had to stop filming reviews halfway because I couldn't tell the difference between one earbud to the other. And if you wondered why I've taken a step back, it's because there's so many to keep up with. It's hard. Now, to be fair, I have made several Soundcore videos and I'm still making videos because I love the brand and I really love what they do, but it's just become harder as a YouTuber and as a reviewer. And a lot of these other YouTubers, I'm not here to put them on the spot, but I don't feel like a lot of them will speak up and say this kind of stuff because they're either afraid that Anchor's not gonna work with them or they're just really that much of a fan. But if you could sit here and justify the re-releases of the same models with only one minor tweak for a price change, and then you take the same headphone, scale it back, and then shell that to cheaper, and then just keep making the same variation over and over and over, then something's not right here. And I feel like these YouTubers, these audio YouTubers, aren't calling it like it is. And the only one that has done that is one of my bestest of friends on the audio space. And if you guys don't know who he is, he's been on my channel for so long 
and Digital Slang is his name. So is Latrell. These are the only two guys that will keep it real, and Digital Slang has always kept it real. So I respect him for that. I don't know about the El Jefes of the world and the 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 unbox therapies of the world or the the whatever reviewers they got on their website. I don't know anymore because it's so confusing. But Digital Slang is that guy that keeps it real, and that's why I always value him. So Digital Slang, if you're watching, shout out. And then lastly, the main reason that I feel like Soundcore is just not the same anymore is because it just feels like the brand has so much they don't even know what to do. And again, it goes back to all these earbuds, but I really don't wanna spend a lot of time crapping on the company because the truth of the matter is, is that I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan of the company. I still, to this day, rock the Liberty 3 Pro. After two years, almost three years, I'm still using these earbuds because they have not only held up exceptionally well, they are some of the best sounding earbuds that are still on the market for a fraction of what they used to cost, and I think they're better. But Soundcore, if you are watching this video, which is a very slim chance, my email is open. I'm always willing to help give feedback. I was a part of your beta testers. I'm willing to still help. I'm not asking for you to put me back in, but this is just my suggestion to you. The first thing I think you need to do to get the brand back on track, because they're not losing sales, but the momentum has died. You need to get the momentum back. And I think the way they can get the momentum back is very, very simple. Number one, they have to go back to their roots. It was audio first and the price disruptor. It really felt like it was a smartphone killer for headphones. That's how incredible it was, number one. Number two, you have to stop with all these different earbuds. You sold the Soundcore frames, you pushed, marketed, advertised it as the next best thing, only to then discontinue it and then start to sell, what are we doing now? Clip-on earbuds now as open earbuds? What are we doing here? You need to limit your lineup. You really need to assess what is working and what's not working, like you did for the frames. But the frames were good potential. I'm just gonna put that out there. The next thing you need to do is whatever the Liberty 4 was, burn it. Go back to the Liberty 3 Pro design and give us that real ACAA design. Having two dynamic drivers stacked on top of each other does not equivalent to the Liberty 3 Pro sound of the ACAA 2.0. You need to go back to that because the customization, the sound quality, the noise canceling, the transparency, the touch controls, the features, LDAC support, all of it was perfect. There was nothing wrong with that. Then you release the Liberty 4 NC, which outperforms the Liberty 4, and the Liberty 4 is supposed to be your flagship earbud, which is now also taking a backseat on the website. So you need to really restructure it and go back to those roots. And the most important thing of all Soundcore is you really have to keep interacting with the fans. Your fan, your community, your community forum was so dedicated and passionate that every time you posted an article, giving them news, giving them features, things, they were listening and the fans responded. And if you just listen and you keep back in that form, if you go back to what made you you, you will see that those users will come back. They will not only follow you, but they will still be there. Listen, I didn't wanna make this a long video and I don't wanna shit on Soundcore because at the end of the day, I'm a fan. I'm still buying their products. I still love the company. That's never gonna change. But at the end of the day, somebody has to say it. Soundcore is not the same company it once was. That's the truth. They are not the audio game changer they once were. They're not the game changer or the disruptor they once were. But that's not to say that they can't do it again. I think Soundcore can do it, but they really have to reevaluate everything. And at the end of the day, they have to listen back to the fans. The fans are what made you what you are today. And if you really value them, open back the forums, listen to your users, and just go back to being that disruptor. Because honestly, I miss the old sound core. And I have a feeling we're probably not gonna ever see it again. And if that's the case, it was a good ride while it lasted.